Okay, hi, can everyone hear me in here? Um, thanks, and if I speak too fast or too slow, uh, you can tell me either way, just raise your hand, or please interrupt with questions. Um, so what I'm gonna introduce you guys today is um, parallel visualization with Python, and mainly concentrating about what we're gonna go over tomorrow in um, the workshop. So I'm gonna go through what is visualization? That's an easy one, sort of. Uh, why should we bother with doing parallel visualization and why Python in particular? Uh, the last one should also be easy. We're all at EuroPython, of course, Python, yes. <laughs> um, and then I'll go over kind of uh, with pretty pictures uh, what we're going to be doing tomorrow afternoon. So first of all, why visualize information at all? Um, so if you have a set of numbers, maybe in a spreadsheet, in a binary file, um, by visualizing it, uh, you can gain some insight into patterns in your data. You can more easily communicate um, to a scientific colleague, a coworker, or a customer uh, what does this data actually mean. You can easily compare your results either to your expectations in debugging or to what someone else, um, a coworker or colleague, uh, got out of a particular computation. And you can gain some appreciation. So here are two beautiful visualizations. One's of shipping patterns um, around the world, and the other is a magnetic field. And you can see that not only do these help us uh, gain insight and communicate kind of what the, the base numbers of the data are up to, they're also very beautiful. So, um, now, why parallel? So desktop machines these days have many cores, two, four, six, 12, hopefully more and more. Um, and by fully using these cores, um, you can uh, gain speed up if you're doing visualization. Moreover, data sets nowadays are getting bigger and bigger, and people are tackling the problem of visualizing and analyzing data sets that are too big to fit in memory on your local machine. So two examples here are n-grams, uh, which are strings of words, where n is the number of words in the string. And Google releases a freely available data set that's used by a lot of people in natural language processing, um, denoting the frequency of a given n-gram in, say, the English language. So how often does the word dog or dogs suck? that string occur in English. I'm a cat lover. <laughs> um, or that, that data set is 2.2 terabytes of data, so that's not going to fit in my MacBook's RAM, maybe next year. Um, uh, and Wikipedia traffic stats are 150 gigabytes. So if we really want to be able to interact with our data, um, and like I said, that, that helps us to discover new patterns in our data, and then we can act on those patterns, to either um, debug our code, make our code run faster, um, investigate a certain phenomenon in more detail, um, then we have to fully utilize our computational resources. So use those many cores um, and uh, fully analyze the full data set by using many machines. So now why Paraview? Um, Paraview is, first of all, open source. Um, it's written in C, C++ under a BSD license. It's very well maintained. It has a large development community behind it. And basically, it's a set of wrappers over the visualization toolkit, which handles a lot of the nitty gritty um, elements of visualization for you uh, with a QT GUI. We just learned a little bit about PyQT in the last talk. Um, so a QT graphical user interface and some parallel rendering libraries on top of that. And everything is neatly wrapped in um, several different languages. My favorite, of course, being Python. And here's kind of Paraview's model of computation. So you cannot have a serial reader, in which case the, the first um, part of this diagram would just be one big block. But if you have a parallel reader, then each uh, process reads just a portion of the data that it's responsible for. Um, and then you can optionally redistribute the data with a data distribution filter um, 
to have, for example, more spatial locality, or if you have a serial reader, you might read in all the data on process zero and then want to distribute the data among all your different processes. So in Paraview, there's just one function that you call, and it takes care of that um, for you as best it can. And then, um, if you want to do some analysis or visualization, uh, there's the full VTK pipeline where you can have, uh, in Paraview's language, filters. Um, these are basically analysis or um, visualization functions. And then finally, you have the Ice-T parallel rendering library. And basically, each process renders whatever data it happens to have locally. And then Ice-T takes care of compositing all those different images, here we have three images, um, into a final image that you actually see on screen or output from your script. So now why Python? I mentioned that there's a great uh, Qt GUI for Paraview um, that you can interact with uh, by making some mouse clicks and um, quickly get up and running with visualization. Um, and you can moreover extend uh, Paraview in C++ by extending some of their um, filters or um, readers by implementing a single method. It's not too difficult, um, and you implement some XML to let the graphical user interface know about your extensions. Um, but with Python, we can easily automate um, a lot of our mouse clicks, so you get tired of that as a researcher clicking around with the mouse very quickly. And moreover, you can embed all of your visualization and part of your analysis into your existing Python code. So if you have a Python code to generate data, you can immediately visualize it kind of in line. So here's an example, and I will go through this in more detail at the tutorial. So what progress are we going to make in this tutorial? Um, so we're going to go over creating simple visualizations in uh, serial and in parallel. Here's an example where I'm actually connected to a parallel server that I started with um, this command, MPI run number of processors two. This was on my local machine and I have two cores. Um, and then the PV server command and connected to that server. Then I created a sphere. Um, I showed the sphere, which basically tells Paraview I've um, made some changes to the data pipeline recognize those changes, and then I render the sphere on screen. And um, if I save the image then, it would just be a gray image, but then I um, color by the process ID. And here I'm connected to a server with um, running on two processes, so when I show that and color by the process ID, um, you can see here I have these two colors of the sphere, red and blue. And this is way more fun to double check when you're running on like a thousand core um, machine that you're actually connected to the server and you really can't believe it the first time you do it. <laughs> so seeing it visually is, this is one of those things where um, it's, it's good to debug your server just to be able to visualize, okay, here is the data, where exactly is it um, living? And if you're expecting uh, processors to handle um, uh, data that's very close to each other, being on the same process, you can visually immediately see if your data distribution works or not. So we'll be able to do this kind of right out of the box there. And um, then we'll go over reading d in data from a comma-separated value ASCII file. That's going to be a serial reader, um, but we can then use the data distribution um, filter um, to if we're running on multiple processors, if you have multiple cores, or I have um, a server set up, we'll um, be able to see which process your data lives on, as well as binary files. Um, this is an example of a little bit of a random number generator, and I colored by um, the size of the random number, and also scaled the sphere by the size of the random number. Um, and Here's some of the, the Python code. Um, I won't go into this in detail right now, but we'll cover this all in a few hours tomorrow and also make, making modifications of this to suit your um, needs. We'll play with some data from the web. This is um, some stellar cluster data that's freely available um, that we can visualize and uh, manipulate. We'll use filters to do analysis. So here's that previous random number generator uh, where I've just thresholded by um, 
random numbers that lie between 0 0.75 and 1. So you see that now I only have big blue spheres instead of small reddish spheres. Um, and uh, writing your own custom readers, writers, and data filters all in native Python. Um, so finally, we'll go over what's possible. And I'm welcome to brainstorm with you guys if you have um, a big or a small data set that you're interested in visualizing how exactly Paraview might suit your needs. Um, and it definitely is possible to visualize and manipulate terabytes of data in one go in real time, given the computational resources. I've looked at billions of, of particles and done analysis tasks in real time via Paraview. And um, so I hope that you guys manage to make it tomorrow. And uh, everything should be very accessible for anyone from beginning Python, beginning visualizing, beginning um, scientific analysis to if you have a huge data set, being able to write your own custom extension and get visualizing it right away. So if you manage, um, please download and run a pair of you binary. There are binary builds for Windows, um, Mac OS X, and Linux, of course. Um, I will also have these on USB keys and running on a local server at the tutorial if you don't manage to do this. And if you have problems with this, please ping me. Um, so thank you very much. Yes? Don't be shy. Do you have any pointers to like freely available data sets that are actually interesting to visualize? Um, yeah, I have, well, um, it depends on what field you find interesting, of course. Um, but there is uh, a lot of data freely available on Amazon S3, for example, uh, their server cluster. And they even index it. Um, Amazon has uh, a freely searchable list of freely available data on S3. And there are, uh, I think, a 1,000 different huge data sets. So both the n-grams and the Wikipedia traffic um, examples in my talk uh, were taken from just searching that list of what's interesting out there. So um, if you have a huge data set you want to visualize, you probably need a huge cluster. And unless you're on at a university, you might want to run on Amazon, for example. So having the data already at Amazon saves you the trouble of transferring two terabytes of data to your server, which is always annoying. Any other questions? Uh, is the the library fit for visualizing uh, finite element analysis data or computational fluid dynamics results? Yes, absolutely. Um, it uh, actually natively handles a lot of commonly used formats in both those fields. Um, and you can definitely write your own custom extensions. There are lots of the primitive data sets in VTK or Paraview that handle, say, moving meshes, um, et cetera. So if you're very lucky, um, you can even pick your favorite data set and use it out of the box. If you're slightly less lucky, you might have to write some lines of Python or C, C++ um, to handle that. But it's very suitable for, for both those fields. And how well does it work with uh, large graph layouts? I haven't um, personally done that. There are a lot of um, customized extensions, plugins. So I maintain one plugin that deals with uh, a few data sets uh, um, and analysis tasks that are very common in astrophysics. And I do know that there is um, a computer science uh, plugin called InfoViz that handles a lot of the graph visualization. Um, topics of interest, but I haven't played around with it myself. So um, I can look into that uh, a bit if you're planning to come tomorrow. Um, but my intuition is that it, it is suitable for that, but I, I just haven't played around with that as much. I knew that there were many questions. 
Is this uh, platform dependent or platform independent? Will it run in a Macintosh? Or? It's platform independent. It uses CMake as a build system, so even the build process is, I built it personally, I've never built it on a Windows machine, but I supervise a student who uses Windows, and he had no problem um, developing and running on Windows. And um, I built on anything from my local Mac to a Linux-based supercomputer. And really, um, sometimes, uh, especially when you're setting things up on a supercomputer, uh, things can get a little hairy in compilation. But definitely for um, your local machine, it's very easy to compile. I have a question. So. If there's any company here that is interested in using it for their commercial, commercial applications, uh, what are the licenses? So it's under a BSD license, um, and I believe that means that you can incorporate it into your commercial products and you don't have to uh, release the entire source as is the GPL. Um, so I am aware of several commercial products that, that use Paraview. Any question? Okay, so thank you. Yeah, thanks.